Hello everybody! Today I'm doing review on the Shadowscape Tarot. Right here. Um, this deck was published in 2010 by Wellin and the uh, artwork is by Stephanie Pai Moon Law. I'm going to be showing the cards as I, as I speak. Um, I have this deck for about two years and I know it's one of the decks that are quite uh, popular so I decided to make this review to kind of share my thoughts on it and maybe inspire you to buy it if you if you will like it. I guess I will start with the cards themselves. Um, they have those very nice fantasy watercolory imagery on them. Um, the back of the cards is quite nice. Is this reversible wheel of fortune <laughs> or just a wheel of a universe. Um, the colour of it is nice, it's like greyish purple, like they're all in like pastel colours. Stock wise and size wise, I would say it's quite general uh, Llewellyn card. So the stock is quite nice, I'm using it for two years and it still seems to be fine. Um, the front have this slightly purpley border, so I would say it's a little bit metallic. Might be just me who sees that, but um, I would say that the front is slightly, a little bit baby metallic uh, colour. Um, so this deck itself, I would say it is a Rider Waite clone, but I would say the cast have their own imagery and their own myth and their own story. So if this is something you think you would like, if you feel like you don't want to follow completely right away, then you would like to have a deck that are kind of going beyond that and that adding some extra layers to the meaning, I would say this one would be great for that. So if you have a look. The Five of Wands. You can see you have the same bit like right away, the theme of fighting and um, competition. It seems like it's a bit different because he's fighting those foxes and he is... It, looks like it actually looks like an equal fight, which let's say Five of Wands and Ride Away is a bit more like an equal um, situation. Um, the full card, as you can see, is slightly, again, different than traditional full card. And instead of animal trying to hold her back, she um, hold him back or just trying to warn him. She's having those duffs that are holding her on a bows. Um, <clears throat> again, a six of swords. We don't have the traditional boat. I'm moving away from a boat, but we have this swan who's kind of saving this kit and just flying away with it from uh, this, I would say, hostile, hostile situation. Um, six of cups is a bit similar, more similar, I would say. Then as a traditional meaning, or, or there's a traditional version of the right away when you got this childhood theme and cups and the toys, and she's like kind of playing with them, so it has it's a bit similar. But uh, ten of swords, let's say, a bit different again, slightly different, slightly different imagery. So I wouldn't necessarily call call it a right away clone because let's say the eight of another card, eight of wands. Uh, which is traditionally the eight of wands, eight wands just actually falling on the ground. In this case, she's just like um, blowing the seeds away. So, again, I would say it's right away based, but it's not completely following the right away pattern and imagery. It has its own story, it has its own meanings, it's adding a few different layers to it. I, I think this deck is actually great for somebody who is more um, advanced reader for the sense that you might be quite used to read a card a certain way and this deck can add to it because uh, you are now looking at slightly different imagery with slightly different meanings can add a uh, few different shades so in this case uh, I think it's it's very nice and occasionally um, I've seen decks that are having slight kind of right weight clones but have their own mythology but can be based on the fact that the creator themselves, they actually didn't know that much about horror and they just got loosely inspired by the cards and maybe add some imagery completely on their own that might not be even related to the meaning. But 
with Shadowscape, I can actually see that uh, the person who done those pictures knows about tarot and she understands the meaning of each card. She's just having slightly different outlook on it and slightly different viewpoint. But I can definitely see that she knows what she's talking, uh, what she's talking about, and what she is um, painting about. I think with the whole imagery, I think some people might find it too fluffy and like a bit too fantasy-like. A bit too girly, let's say maybe, I don't know, for a male reader. But I would say, on the other hand, loads of people will uh, really resonate with it. The imagery itself is very beautiful. It's extremely detailed. If you have a look at the Hermit card. The cards are quite small, but the amount of... Uh, details on them are just manic. The paintings are just super detailed and super amazing. For that sense, I would definitely appreciate if the cards can be a bit bigger, so I can like really enjoy all the details on the cards and you know uh, really see them and have a proper look at them. I know that in that sense, I guess the deck would be a bit harder to actually shuffle, but then I think with this particular deck. I think I would be okay with uh, a bit hard shuffling if I can see those cats a bit more, a bit better because they're extremely, extremely uh, beautiful. One of the reasons also why I would like to have the cards a bit bigger is because I found those cards extremely amazing for path working. If you do path working with a card and you're going in a trance meditation and you kind of enter the card and really see what happens, um, I found those cards absolutely amazing for it. And therefore, it would be quite a bit easier with uh, slightly bigger cards. But it's definitely doable, and even with this uh, size. And the truth is that if you want to see or have those prints in a larger, um, then you can just go on a Stephanie Paimun Law website and you can order a larger print for them. But again, I, I would like to have maybe this deck a little bit, a little bit bigger. Mm. One of the things I also like about this deck is the fact how those uh, cards are actually, the suits are color coded. So let's say this is wands. So you can see the wands have, are having this reddish, orangey, pinky colors. Um, pentacles, show you pentacles, are having this like green green theme and showing some sort of like pagan vikany creatures uh, with dragons and chameleons. Um, so this is like a forest pagan theme. Then you have the, um, the cups and the cups are obviously, obviously, they're blue and they're usually picturing fish or turtles and some sort of mermaid-like creatures. I can, can show you the this one actually. Yeah, and the three of cups. The three of cups is beautiful. So it's like a mermaid-like characters, bubbles, waves, underwater. Very watery. Uh, colors and very water is uh, uh, landscapes. Then you have the swords, which are having this, I would say, grayish purple colors. They are including animals like obviously birds and butterflies. You can see here butterflies and birds and all other air animals and creatures. And <clears throat> Finally, you have the major arcanas, which I would say are color-wise, like a bit mixed, a bit more mixed, and having a bit more, um, usually some more contrasty colors, than, um, or include like two or three more colors, I would say, that are kind of going. It's not like one tone would be prevailing in those, uh, I would say. So... In that sense, I find out that, let's say, if you are one of the readers who, for whom the color coding is important and they like just to lay the cards and 
see actually what they can tell just from the colors, how many reds are there, you know, is it fiery reading, is it loads of stability in it, are there loads of emotions and water. Um, but this deck is really softly and nicely color coded, uh, so it's not actually, it's nice you can see it, but it's not like, I would say, completely, oh, like, <laughs> dismantling the whole deck. Uh, so it's, sti it's still visually kind of sticks together, but you have this um, coding that you can that you can use for your reading. So actually, that, that I found out this this coding would be done uh, quite well uh, for this particular deck. So if you'd like to get this deck, uh, it actually comes either in a regular package with just a small little booklet, or you can get a bit more like elaborate version with, that comes with the book. And the book is quite big, and you can actually see the pictures in the book and bigger, so you can like properly actually have a look and really, really um, appreciate them. The judgment card is beautiful. So I would say this deck would be great for somebody who, let's say, likes color coding that is subtle but visible. For somebody, I guess, who likes this type of a uh, imagery and this type of uh, fantasy themes but also for somebody who is like really wanting or willing to uh, look at the cards with maybe fresh new perspectives and try to find something new uh, in them and try to find new meanings than just blindly let's say following uh, Rider Waite system and Rider Waite uh, meaning so I think in that sense it can be really really amazing deck to actually have um, and to use so that that was my experience with Shadowscape I have it for as I said two years I'm not using it as my main deck but um, occasionally it just feels like, feels like Shadowscape so so I use it so thank you if you have any experience with Shadowscape please write me down in the comment section below if you have it how you like it how, there's something about it that you don't like and so you can share your experience with others who are maybe trying to uh, wanting to buy it and if you like our channel please subscribe and um, we have more reviews in the playlist section so if you're interested uh, have a look and thank you so much thank you so much uh, for watching